Hello there guys and welcome to another installment of Trey the Explainer. Radioactive Fallout. Ever since us humans have harnessed the power of the atom, we have screwed up a few times and released vast amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere in both warfare with nuclear bombs and by accident in various power plant malfunctions. Which, according to post-apocalyptic films and video games, as well as popular YouTube videos, this radiation creates horrifyingly deformed mutant monsters and creatures when it gets into the environment and affects animals. Oh my god, look at that. Oh my god, Meyer lurks. Oh my god, two-headed cows? It seems, according to pop culture, if we ever were to have a nuclear war, forget about the nuclear winter or food shortages or radiation poisoning. Look out for those frickin' mutants. But today, with the release of HBO's really great Chernobyl miniseries, yes, I'm cashing in a little bit, as well as the debates concerning investing in more nuclear power, let us ask the question, is radioactive fallout really as bad as how movies depict it? If we were to have a nuclear war, would it create horrifying creatures? Well, let's find out. To replicate what conditions might resemble if the world were to end in a nuclear war and radioactive fallout seeping into the environment, we should look no further than the actual locations where radiation has ended up in ecosystems. For the purposes of this video, let us look at two examples which have been researched pretty significantly after the subsequent years, Chernobyl and the Bikini Atoll. The 1986 Chernobyl disaster in modern-day Ukraine is pretty infamous for being probably the worst nuclear power plant disaster in human history, so far. Releasing vast amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere, water, soil, and plants, and yes, even animals. Great efforts were taken to reduce the potency of this disaster, and all humans were removed from the region for the safety of its inhabitants. But, still, radiation remains. Does, as the horror movie Chernobyl Diary suggests, the exclusion zone possess deformed monsters running about? Well, the answer is a definitive no. It is true that within the first four years following the release of the radioactive material into the region, birth deformities such as missing or extra limbs and eyes, and skull deformities and so on, increased by possibly as much as 100%. These deformities lasted only in the first few years following the disaster, and diminished as years went on, and the radiation decayed. It seems that the vast majority of the majorly deformed animals died near birth, it did not survive past infancy, and natural selection weeded these types of animals out of the population, and that is likely why these effects only lasted a few years following the disaster. We know that today, the lack of humans has caused the exclusion zone to become a wildlife sanctuary of sorts for many European animals that are highly endangered elsewhere. Lynx, wild boar, the wolves, brown bear, bison, Friswalski's horse, and eagles and owls have all returned and live within the remains of city buildings and even the reactor itself, and they seem to be thriving. A 2005 study concerning the barn swallows of the exclusion zone did find that the swallows within the zone still have relatively elevated frequencies of physical abnormalities when compared to those outside the zone. Slightly deformed beaks and tail feathers and random bits of albino feathers. But at the end of the day, these deformities are really nothing compared to what pop culture tells us to expect. For the most part, these animals are just as healthy, if not better off living in the fallout radiation, than the animals outside. And this is likely due to a lack of human intervention, such as hunting and habitat destruction. They are able to live just as they did a thousand years ago, if not ten thousand. The Bikini Atoll in the Pacific Ocean, the real-life location of Spongebob's house, was, during the late 1940s to 1950s, the site of about 23 nuclear bomb tests by the United States. One of these bombs being the infamous and monstrous Castle Bravo. 10,000 times more powerful than each of the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and spewing vast amounts of radioactive material into the water and on the islands surrounding the region. If any place on this earth should possess the mutant multi-headed enemies of Fallout, they should live in the lagoon of the Bikini Atoll. Two-headed sharks should definitely be in there. Well, no. Just like with Chernobyl, this is not the case. A coral reef flourishes even within the bomb crater, Fish and sharks thrive in the oceans and appear relatively healthy, again maybe even healthier when compared to areas of the ocean where humans are allowed to fish. Really, only the major noticeable effect of the fallout might be the fact nurse sharks that typically have two dorsal fins in the region only have one here. So, they got that at least. 
It seems radioactivity does increase rates of mutation slightly, but evolutionary speaking, the few genetic and physical abnormalities that do arise in populations are minor, and if major ones do appear, they are weeded out of the population through natural selection. Organisms have dealt with far worse throughout the history of our planet. Sorry Mad Max, Fallout, and so on. No, radioactive fallout does not create monsters. The one thing it does give you is cancer. Radiation is actually more harmful to us, longer living animals, because our lifespans lead to more opportunities for cancerous cells to arise in our bodies with the mutations to our DNA. But that's pretty lame if you ask me. It's crazy to think humans themselves are actually seemingly more harmful to the ecosystems than the radiation even is. So if there's ever a nuclear war, and you, the viewer, are watching this video on your Pip-Boy, um... Check yourself for tumors. And watch out for those incredibly healthy and non-mutated predators. I've been Trey the Explainer. And thank you so much for watching this short video that I just kind of pushed out there to hold you guys over for a much longer episode. Life is older, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, swaying like a breeze.